Hello, all Interest TV listeners and viewers. Uh, Lindex reported their Q2 this morning, and we have CEO Susan Enboge interview as usual. Hello, Susan. Hello. So let's start uh, kind of chronologically from the, the guidance change you made already uh, on Monday. So you lowered a bit the sales guidance for the full year ahead of the Q2 earnings. Can you elaborate? Was this related to both of your segments and was it more the kind of past market development we have seen in the spring or also also uh, weakening of the outlook for the second half? Yeah. So uh, the change in revenue guidance is related to the challenging market situation that we're seeing right now and more specifically, of course, to the volatility of the fashion market mm -hmm. on Lindex Group's main markets. And we know that the fashion market grew in May, uh, but it declined in April. And what we have seen in the preliminary, preliminary figures for June, it was quite volatile uh, at the moment. So currently we have available preliminary market data that shows that in June, for example, the Finnish fashion market declined with 11% according to Finland Fashion and Sports Commerce Association. Of course, that is a big drop in that category. Yeah, and and that's impacting both both of your segments basically. Or yes, of course, yeah. since uh, those are two big. Uh, this segment is important both for the stock division and the index division. Mm. Indeed. All right. Then looking at the Q2 isolated, then what would you say were the highlights of the quarter, and uh, was the performance weaker than you originally expected? Since since you had to also downgrade the, the guidance. Of course, I do expect more that we would continue to uh, increase our revenue. But with that said, I would uh, still highlight that the group's revenue and gross margin remained uh, on the comparison period level despite a very challenging market situation. So that we need to have in mind. But then looking at some other highlights for the Q2, I think it is all about that stock money divisions adjusted operating result improved in every month of the quarter. This is a strong message. And thirdly, we have now implemented the RFID in all stores in, at Lindex and for about 80% uh, of all the fashion items in Stockman. So that is also good progress. And as a fourth uh, highlight, uh, I would like to mention that the Stockman's divisions now revised organization. And this will support both our strategy implementation. That is to, of course, increase revenue and profitability. But here we can also say, of course, that we will improve efficiency and that will generate also savings. And uh, the last one that I also would like to mention is, of course, that we have received a validation uh, from the science-based target initiative for our group's climate target. So that I see as very positive. Yeah, yeah, good. If we go a bit further in the segments, as, as mentioned all, all, already, the, the sales uh, dropped, especially in the Lindex segment due to the weak markets, but at, at least looking at the market figures for Sweden, I, I, I have <laughs> available the sales actually dropped more for, for uh, Lindex chain than for the whole market. So mm -hmm. uh, kind of what was driving this uh, or as were the other countries mm -hmm. even weaker kind of mm -hmm. where, or was, was it broad based across all, all of the markets or how, how was it? Yeah, for the Lindex division, we can see that the revenue developed well in, in April and in May, but in June, we then had a lower amount of visitors to our stores, especially. Uh, as I said here earlier, we don't yet have all the market data available, but we can see that the data from Finland, that the fashion market then declined heavily in June, like with 11%, and somewhat less in Sweden. Uh, as we state here, we have some data saying minus five, but we also have uh, Swedbank data saying around minus 10%, but still not having the full month uh, here captured. So we still need to see the full data, but it has been a tough development for the total market as such in our main markets, mm. uh, impacting Lindex and also, of course, the Stockman. Yeah, sure, mm. sure. Uh, yeah. Then then in the Stockman division, you did show growth and earnings improvement in Q2, but uh, mostly due to the timing of the crazy days, I guess. And if you look at the H1, sales were actually down and earnings quite flattish show. So you mentioned already some efficiency measures coming up, but do, do you think you can drive earnings up without sales growth or should sales growth pick up as well going forward? Mm, yeah. Um, yeah, as you said, uh, the stock division sales, it increased in the second quarter. It was up with 8%. And that was mainly due to the timing and the success of Crazy Days campaign, uh, which also performed better than previous spring. And the adjusted operating result improved by almost 3 million euros due to the increased revenue, but also successful cost savings. 
Um, I think we can continue uh, improving the profitability by focusing uh, more on the full price sales and also further to improve the cost efficiency that I think we have already started in a good way, but we can see positive signs also going forward with digitalizations and also warehouse automation. And of course, the, uh, that we are now improving the operational efficiency uh, in the organization that will then have a nice impact for the, for the coming months. Um, yeah. Also here, I would like to mention looking at the data here that looking at the market in Finland uh, for uh, January to June, we can see it was done by uh, minus, more, more than minus 3%. So still here, Stockman is doing slightly, slightly better. But uh, of course, we want to grow this division as well in terms of revenue. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, then turning into the restructuring process and the, the settlements you did during H1, it seems that you paid the, the uh, former landlords quite a bit more there than what was appointed in the restructuring program, which, which was also, also visible as one-time costs in the Q2 report. Mm. So can you elaborate a bit? Why do you think this was mm. a good choice for the company and for the shareholders to, to make such settlements? Yeah, we, we of course see that ending the restructuring program and moving forward from the situation that we are in today is very much in the interest of our shareholders too. So I don't see any conflicting interest here at all. We continue our process to solve the last open dispute and look forward to ending the restructuring pro process as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and should we take the previous settlements as, as some indications that you are kind of Willing to say the loss of the last case for uh, for a bit of, bit of a higher price tag if, if needed. I wouldn't comment that um, uh, that, but uh, we are very interested in, of course, ending the restructuring process. That I can yeah. say. <laughs> yeah, yes, that's that's understandable. Yes. Okay. Then finally, coming back to the guidance, uh, you you did uh, maintain the uh, the EBIT uh, EBIT guidance range intact despite the slight drop in the sales guidance, and that obviously. Mm. Yeah, implies a bit higher margin if you kind of mm -hmm. take it take it very precisely. So, so is there something particular supporting the the margins? We kept the guidance for the adjusted offer result unchanged, uh, and that is in line with our forecast. And I think, uh, if needed, we will do even more on the cost side to make sure that we we are uh, developing according to the guidance that mm -hmm. we have set. Uh, so that I feel comfortable with and confident with us executing. Yeah, yeah. So you have some flexibility in the cost to to adapt if if needed for the lower yes. sales. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Good, mm. good. That's 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 all for now. So then, thank you, Susan, and uh, good luck for the for the rest of the year, and uh, have a nice summer in between. You too. Thank you so much. Have a nice thank day. You.